hypermagnesemia, nursing interventions. Brought to you by the Brevard Community College Institute for Nursing, Palm Bay Campus. Instilling ethics, dignity, and compassion to Brevard's nursing students for well over two years. And a grant by Dove Professional Apparel. Cramping your style with dorky nursing student vests since 1957. When it comes to hypermagnesemia, nursing interventions are critical and a constant cycle of assessment and intervention are necessary to prevent what can be a rapid deterioration of the client's condition. In mild cases of hypermagnesemia, common doctor's orders are oral and IV fluids to increase urine output, ridding the body of excess magnesium. When giving large volumes of fluids, watch closely for signs of fluid overload and kidney failure. Both conditions can arise quickly. Monitor lab results that reflect renal function, such as BUN and creatinine levels. During treatment, you'll be monitoring urine output, assessing the client's neuromuscular system, including deep tendon reflexes and muscle strength. Flush skin and diaphoresis may indicate the treatment is not working. Level of consciousness may deteriorate. Vital signs are to be frequently taken to determine if hypotension and respiratory depression are present or worsening. If they are, a serious condition may be emerging and the doctor must be contacted immediately. Prepare the client for continuous cardiac monitoring and assess electrocardiogram tracings for pertinent changes. The EEG, the BP monitor, and the AVV. Yes, sir. You and uh, get the machine that goes bing, and get the most expensive machine. That be prepared to administer resuscitation drugs, maintain a patent airway, and provide calcium gluconate, a magnesium antagonist, as ordered. Be prepared to provide mechanical ventilation in clients with compromised respiratory function. This is an extreme example of what can go wrong, but it does happen. If bradyarrhythmia is developed, the client may go into cardiac arrest. Patients going down, doobie doo, down, down. Patients going down, doobie doo, down, down. Waking up his heart to do. He's dead. Must be dead. He was worse than dead. His brain is gone. But there is one more option to prevent this outcome. Poor renal excretion is a major cause of hypermagnesemia. As an emergency treatment, peritoneal or hemodialysis using a magnesium-free dialysate is used. Nursing interventions apply here also. Although this emergency procedure happens in the hospital, its function is explained at a dialysis center. This is Dee Dee. Um, <laughs> okay, wait just a minute. <laughs> what we have here is a Fresenius dialysis machine. This is the filter that we would normally use. And what it does is it's a semi-permeable membrane that by diffusion and osmosis, removes the impurities from the body that the kidneys can no longer remove. Through a blood pump, we're moving his blood at 550 cc's per minute. And um, then it goes through the dialyzer and comes out the venous side. Then this is a safeguard. This is the final safeguard to the patient. This is an air detector and a clamp, a tubing arm clamp, so that if air passes point, it would stop the machine, protecting the patient from air embolus. And then to do dialysis, you have to have what is called dialysate. Dialysate is a chemical composition similar to blood. It contains all of those things in it that we either want to remove. So if we were to remove it, the dialysate comes into this compartment and never mixes with the blood, but by diffusion and osmosis and leaves via the blue line. And if, at the end of the dialysis treatment, we just reverse the process and open the saline line right here and close the arterial line and return the blood to their body. Um, and that's really what dialysis is in a nutshell. What can go wrong? A lot. You're moving blood at, um, you know, 
550 cc's per minute. You have a leak in the system, they can bleed out.